and a half, three minutes, so you don't have to listen to me and Coach Swingle ramble on. Uh, we're going to let the room fill up. As I mentioned, we're going to wait about a minute and 50 seconds for the room to fill up before we actually get going. Coach Swingle, a lot of recording done earlier today. Absolutely. Counter RPOs, another recording I can't talk about yet. It's going to be out later this week that we're excited for as well. So, Lots of uh, good content coming out this week. Yes, yes this Street. week, this week, next week, a lot of good videos, good podcasts come out too. We just were, recorded a couple more. Um, some pretty big names coming through the pipeline as well. Shout out to Steve McGrath, who's on the back end monitoring here for the podcast. Um, Lots of good stuff to wrap up the uh, the all off season here as we get yes, ready. Yes, yes. Ball camp start as we get ready to ball for ball camp start. When um you guys go live, what day? Officially, August, with Thursday, Thursday, August first is our first day, and then we have the two day acclimation period. So Saturday will be our first uh, full go, full padded practice and all that stuff. Yep. Got it. We have to wait until, I believe it's the 18th. So we got to wait just a little bit. When's your uh, first game? What? Uh, and not till the end of August. You yeah, we only have that amount of time to do pads. Yeah, we have. Yeah, it's short. It's extremely short, and that's one of my biggest uh, faults with Massachusetts football is just, it's kind of like, oh, here you go, figure it out. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we got when two scrim- you, When do you guys have your first, like, actual practice? So we start, I believe it's the 18th. Um, it's like your first, like, day at all? Put it on, good to go, yeah. Yep, so then, mean, and then we like, have two weeks. We you, have don't, two, you don't do any, like, helmet acclimation days or anything like that? Yeah, we have to do, like, uppers, helmets, uppers, yeah. and then you get into it, uh, which is, like, a day, two days, and then you get into it. Uh, but then from there, yeah, it's it's first scrimmage, sex scrimmage game. So it moves fairly fast. It's crazy. But I always wish that we had a little bit more time to, you know, be able to acclimate yourself to the hitting and the helmet fitting and things like that. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, very interesting. But that's for another topic. Tonight we're going to talk about fronts and alignment. Um, for those that are tuning in, this is going to seem a bit fundamental and a, a bit basic and the way – uh, myself and Coach Swingle, we like to teach things is from the ground up. So uh, some things are going to be, you know, taught from a, I, I say fundamental standpoint, but it's going to be a little basic. But, you know, we invite offense and defensive coaches to come in here. That way you can understand what the defense is trying to do to you if you're an offense coach. And then obviously uh, the fronts line up in it if you're a defensive coach as well. So Coach Swingle, if you are good to go, let's rock. Absolutely. All right, let's do it. Um, all right, so let me get everything set up here. Can you see that screen? Yep. Okay, perfect. But before we get going, we got to give a shout out to our sponsor, Team Builder. Uh, they provide strength and conditioning software to more than 500 high school football programs nationwide as well as the NFL. If you write your own program, have a full-time strength coach, or need training programs, guys, check out Team Builder. They can make your weight room more efficient, more accountable, and smarter. Uh, when measuring a team's progress. So if you are getting ready, like Coach Swingle and myself are for the upcoming season, be sure to check out Team Builder to be able to um, take all of your lifts, put them in one central spot. That way you can focus more on game film and doing the X's and O's. All righty. Coach Swingle, let's get to it. All right, so first we have defensive fronts here, okay? And this slide is extremely basic. Uh, for those who are unfamiliar with defensive fronts, it's always by the first number. So in this case, we're talking a 4-3 a 3-5, three, a 3-3 three, three stack, a 3-4. We're always going to be working with the first number right now, okay? So it's t- typically dip- dictated by the scheme, okay? As mentioned, 4-3, 3-4. Three, three, uh, three, if you're in an uh, even front, typically you're playing your gap fit, okay? If you're in an odd front, most of the time we're going to see a two-gap fit. And we're going to be going through those in a second, okay? Just some terminology here, and we pulled these pictures from our mobile app. Um, whenever we talk about a head-up technique or head-up alignment, it's literally helmet to helmet. Okay. And that's probably the best way to teach it is head up. You're looking him eye to eye in the stance. Okay. Anytime we talk about inside technique, we're going to be talking about the inside shoulder. Okay. Of, um, that player that we're aligned upon. And then same thing for the outside technique. We're going to be on the outside shoulder. So pretty self-explanatory, but I wanted to make sure I covered that before we went any further. Okay. Coach, I want you to jump in here too, uh, as I start to explain this, but, this is how we teach the numbering system. And this is actually, uh, I grabbed this from uh, Coach Dub Maddox in the R4. So big shout out to him for this chart right here. Uh, but this is how we teach at Victory the alignments, the shades, 
the gaps and everything else. I know there was a huge debate on Twitter about what coach uh, teaches which system on this. This is just what we typically teach. So um, head up, the way I teach it is any head up technique is an even number, okay? So head up the center is a zero, head up the guards two, tackles four, tight ends gonna be a six, okay? So any even number is head up. Anything on the inside shoulder is just the head up number with the eye, okay? So inside shoulders, two eye, head up the tackles, four eye, excuse me, inside, four eye, inside the tight end, six eye, okay? And then any outside technique that we have is gonna be an odd number, okay? Because you can't get inside of the center, the center is always gonna have either zero or one, okay? Because there's no inside technique. On the guards, a three, tackles a five, on the tight ends, a seven, or otherwise known as a wide nine. Uh, Coach, anything to add on that? No, not really. Yeah, just uh, like you're kind of talking about, different people have different ways of doing it, but this seems to be the standard numbering system. Some teams will use an eight as opposed to a seven for that uh, outside alignment for a tight end, but the way that I teach it is with the seven as well. But you see little different nuances here and there, but for the most part, this does seem to be the generally accepted version of the alignments. Exactly. Yeah. And then also a one can also be called a shade too. We do see that with this. If you do use this numbering system, you can also call a one just a shade. You know, he's shading on the center. Uh, you hear that terminology thrown around a lot too. But uh, as far as what we're going to talk about tonight, this is the the rubric of the numbering system that we're actually going to use. So if you do use something different, uh, we apologize. But as far as what we're going to be talking about tonight, as long as you have this as a foundation, you'll be able to follow along to everything we do. Okay. All set, Ray? Yes, sir. All right. Good. Okay, so the first one we're going to get into is just our even fronts, okay? And we talk over and under. Um, over technique, we're going to set the three technique to the tight end, okay? And they're always going to have a one on the backside. So when we talk about over, it's a three technique. On the backside, it's a one technique, okay? If we're talking about an under front, it's literally the exact opposite, okay? We're going to set the three technique away from the tight end, and then we'll play the one technique here over the center. Um, what else you got, Ray? Yeah, sometimes. So if you want to make like a modification to that backside alignment, a lot of teams will uh, refer to that two I as a G technique as well. So you can do like an over G, or as opposed to setting that backside tackle into a shade for that one that we talked about, he can uh, have that G tag to make him be a two I alignment in these even fronts. So it's really just different ways you can play off of the over under, which is like the base standard as far as aligning to and from the tight end. Uh, another one as far as back alignment, we talk about tight ends being H-backs nowadays. When we go empty, as opposed to doing it versus over, under, or if we go everyone's detached with just the one back offense, a lot of teams will set their three technique either to or away the running backs. We can use the king and queen tag for our even fronts to do that. So king would be aligning the three technique to the uh, running back, queen be away. So we have that three technique away from the running back alignment if he's in the shotgun. Exactly. And these terminologies can be mixed up, you know, king and queen, whatever, over, under, just any opposites that you have in order to flip the, the front. Absolutely. Okay. Next one here, and it, it's a little bit of what you alluded to as well. Okay. We talk about field boundary fronts. Okay. And this is where in the traditional spread game where you're having just five down linemen here, we can call our three technique to the field and our one technique will be on the backside. Vice versa to that, if you want the three technique into the boundary, Okay, and the one technique on the backside here, we can just call it simply field and boundary. Okay, and adding on to your point, uh, Ryan, if you want to go opposite or to the back, right, you can call it that way as well. For now, we just left it as field and boundary. Um, but as a side note as well, if you want to set your, uh, and that's more of a game plan situation, if you want to set it to the back or away from the back, back you can have a uh, call for that as well. Yeah, it's just that whole tendency thing that we, that we talk about. So if teams like to run their run schemes to the tight end or if they like to run them away from the, the back alignment, it's just that week-to-week -week tendency that you'll be looking for as, as, as far as where you want to set that three technique to and what uh, keys you want to use to dictate where that three technique's going. Exactly. Moving on here. We are moving pretty fast, so if there is any questions in the chat, please feel free to interrupt us. Uh, we're just going to be buzzing through this thing. Uh, next front here is the mug front, and I tweeted about the, this earlier this week. Um, the mug front, you can use an even front. You can put your guys in threes. I think here, the e this is the Eagles uh, defense here under Jim Johnson. They have theirs in a two and a three, and then they just walk the linebackers up. So this is also known as a mug front, and especially present day, we're starting to see a lot more teams bluff coverages, bluff fronts, and bail out. This would be an example of bluffing 
uh, an alignment here. And so they walk up their linebackers to the A-gap. And if you're playing a four-man front here or an even front, you can actually blast these line <laughs> linebackers out into cover three. You can have them blitz in a zero blitz or even blitz in a cover one blitz as well. Uh, so it's just different looks that you can give the offense, um, but still play your base defense, whether it be a cover three look or if you want to bring the house with a cover zero. Yeah, I think that mug front is something that can be applied to all defensive fronts as we talk about coming up, just more of that technique itself from the linebackers. And uh, thinking about it from an, off from an offensive perspective, when those guys are walked up uh, with, with, from an offensive line pass protection standpoint, the offensive line is going to have to check their protection to account for those guys, whether or not they blitz or not, because if they're there pre-snap, they're still an immediate threat to the offensive line. So when you have those walked up players, if you, if you can really dictate what the offensive line is doing up front. If you get a good game plan read on them, as well as dictating the matchups for one-on-ones and things of that nature that can really be tilted into the defense's advantage. Exactly. All right. And then the next one here, anything else on this, Ray? I didn't want to cut you off before we get going here. No, all good. Okay, great. All right, so now we're going to get more to the odd front here, okay? And when we talk about a base odd front, okay, it's technically uh, we have two – excuse me, we have a zero technique, right, which is a player that can play within a two-gap system. Okay, and Ryan, I want you to talk a little bit about the two-gap system in a second here, but um, next will be just two, four, or five techniques, and we'll go through different terminology as well. But most of the time, if you're getting – a straight odd front here with three players, you're getting your zero and you're getting two, either four or five techniques. But um, Coach Ryan, do you mind talk a little bit about the zero technique and uh, what kind of player this nose tackle has to be? Yeah, so what a lot of teams will do with that nose tackle in that odd front is they'll have him be a two-gap player. Uh, so as opposed to having him just lining up in a shade or a two-eye like he would in an even front, he now has a two-way go on that center into either a gap. So he's more of a read player reacting to whatever the offense is doing up front. So if he takes his initial two read steps, gets, gets his hand on, hands on that center, and then is able to make a read to whatever side the ball is going to, it really gives him an advantage to take up both gaps as opposed to just limiting him to occupying one gap by lining him up head up on the center and giving him a two-way go. Yeah, and I want to just make the comparison here too. If we go back to any, like even this field front here, if you have a guy in a three technique and a one technique, there's your pretty much your B and your A gap players with linebackers filling up B and uh, the backside B and the front side A um, on the on the top of the uh, formation here. But you look at the odd front, it's a little bit different with this nose tackle having to be a stud being able to play the two gaps. Yeah, I, I think it's just really an advantage depending on what personnel you have, and there's also ways where you can dictate which gap he's responsible for if you don't have a guy that's capable of doing that. So the nice thing about the odd front is the ability to do multiple things out of one front, uh, create different looks with different uh, variations of pressure as well, just having the ability to be a two-gap player in any position as well as just having that single-gap responsibility if you can get to it post-snap. Exactly. The advantages of having that odd front is just the flexibility and the, the uh, variations you're able to run out of the front. Okay, first front we have is the tight front. And I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, Coach, this is becoming more and more um, frequent to counteract the spread game too is having this zero technique and having these two defensive ends in four eyes uh, playing their outside, uh, excuse me, the four eye inside technique here and just using their hands and, and really disrupting those zone schemes. Yes, yeah, so with teams running that spread look and that one back offense that we see so much throughout college and the NFL nowadays, what a lot of teams are doing take away that inside zone aspect and force it. So if the offense wants to match with 11 personnel, 10 personnel, get the defense into more of that nickel and dime look as far as their personnel matchups, uh, it forces everything to bounce outside and spill to those more athletic players who operate better in space, as opposed to now we have those guys lined up in five techniques with a slight outside alignment. It really opens up two gaps in the middle that are now closed by just bumping them down to a four eye technique. Like we said, just spilling everything to the outside and allowing your athletes to make plays in space where they're most comfortable, as opposed to getting all mixed up with the offensive line in the interior. Yeah, exactly. And now you stack three linebackers behind them and that's where the three, three stack can really give some, uh, offenses problems but yeah it's just making everything spill the outside especially teams that like to run uh, up in between the guards whether it be power or whether it be anything else uh, it really helps disrupt that so uh, next run here we we call it oki i know there's a ton of other terms for it but the way we're identifying in victory is just the oki front where you're getting your zero technique and you're getting either your uh, sevens your wide nines whatever you want to call them just an outside shake te technique to be able to press on the outside tackle um right you identify this as oki um 
talk about the advantages of playing this outside technique here. So yeah, this is kind of that counter to what we talked about earlier uh, with the four eye. So now if teams want to start getting into that wide zone look where they're running a lot of more outside zone schemes, teams that like to go empty, do a lot of stuff with the jet read and stuff like that. If you want to sort of force everything back up inside, that's one advantage of doing the Oki front, just the inverse to that tight front. But also when, once we get into passing down situations, that wide nine technique allows for better rush angles and allows for that defensive end to be one-on-one -on -one with that tackle as opposed to aligning into a four eye and sort of getting double teamed by that guard and tackle and really uh, having two guys on either side of him trying to work him in pass protections. So this wide nine just allows him to have a better angle to the quarterback, more of that free rush as opposed to being in more of a tight alignment, not giving him quite as good of a rush angle. Yeah, exactly. And we, we have a comment here from Coach M. Holiday talking about uh, seeing a lot of four eyes. I know a lot of teams are now, which is getting closer and closer to a bare front. It's actually we're actually transitioning into the bare front. Um, but yeah, I totally agree too. It's just those four eyes are soon enough, they're going to be head up on the twos. But for now, uh, they're going to be stuck in the four eyes here. But um, yeah, our next front here is just we, we put in the odd front just because it's it's seen out of the three four scheme. But uh, the next front, just with bear, we have a zero. You either have two twos or two threes where we're lining up straight head on. And uh, this is also known as double eagle. If, correct me if I'm wrong, Ryan. Uh, but I've sure. seen some teams call it double eagle as well. Bear front. There's a million different names for it. At Victory, we identify it as bare front. Uh, talk a little bit about the bare front. So yeah, it's just that it's a uh, look that a lot of teams will get to once they get into whatever their uh, goal line situation is, especially in that spread offense area that we talked about, not wanting to sub in extra defensive linemen. What a lot of teams will do, we'll just kick to this bare front once they get down into that uh, tight red zone area and uh, just creates those angles, forces everything, clogs up the middle. So when teams are looking to get down to that red zone area, uh, looking to force the ball up the middle into some inside zone power, all that kind of stuff. Uh, forces ball to get pushed to the outside where we do have athletes, but also more so just that that uh, idea of loading the box, getting the offensive line covered, getting them into that big on big situation, allowing your linebackers to be more free players once you pack all those guys into the box. But on the opposite end, it puts a lot more stress on your corners, safeties and DBs on the back end as well by taking those guys out of coverage and putting them into the box. Yeah. Exactly. All right. And that was it, actually. Those are all the fronts that we have listed. I believe there was close to nine, ten of them. Uh, we want to just open the chat up now and just ask you what your favorite front is. I know Coach M. Holiday was talking about seeing a lot of four eyes and uh, things are getting pushed more into the box to be able to defend that zone scheme and a lot of the power reads that we're seeing now. Uh, but we just wanted to open the chat before we actually end this thing to any coaches that have any questions, comments, uh, anything they want to ask us. It was a relatively short clinic tonight. I think we're at about 17, 18 minutes, but we just want to run through these real quick and make sure that if you're an offensive coach or if you're a defense coach, you understand kind of what the defense is trying to do to you or if you're a defense coach, you know, what's another front that you can possibly add into the mix to uh, counteract the offense. So, uh, Coach Swingle, any last words before we get off? Yeah, I think it's just all about finding what works best for you as a defense originally and just having a base to hang your hat on as you're going into the season. And once you have multiple like tools in that toolbox that you rep during camp and just get that baseline feel with, now when you get into a game week situation, you have just more options at your availability to do different things with different fronts uh, and allow that to dictate your game plan and have those different tools in the toolbox to combat whatever you may see during the season. So yeah, like during the season when you see a team that's going to be more of a pro-style team, you might not want to do uh, for the 4-I, the, four the tight front against teams where you're looking to spill the ball outside. It's like if they're already looking to get the ball outside on their outside zone from under center and stuff like that, you might not use that one week, but it's always a good tool to have in your toolbox to have that multiplicity within your defensive scheme, no matter yeah. what. Yep, for sure. Uh, we had another comment from 84C page. 84 says, Bear is great against the wing T teams. It is a great shakeup uh, against the wing T teams. Um, all right, well, if there's no more questions in the chat, we're going to wrap there. Um, also, just want to let everyone know we just released our new uh, segment, so to say, Rye. Is that the best way to put it? We're going to be putting out breakdowns every week of different schemes with whiteboards, film cutups. It's about eight minutes long, not crazy long. You can digest it uh, while you're eating lunch or you know, even at night laying in bed. So it's something that we've put out there. We have our latest one we just, we just released today uh, on the Oklahoma Counter RPO. We have a few more that are in the works as well, so be sure to look at those. Uh, my name is Chris Haddad. Coach Ryan Swingle is on as well. We will be back next week and we will see you then.